Thank you all for not injuring each other and uh, uh, you know running out our insurance or anything. And thank you all for coming to the first event. Um, we all worked really hard on it. And now I'm going to show you how hard it is to do a talk uh, inside of that event. So uh, this is talking about number stations. Um, what they are, I'll get to eventually. But what I really need to introduce you to is Mr. Belvedere. This was my favorite sitcom growing up. Um, I wanted to watch it every single day. It's about a British butler who moves in with a sports waiter family, and you know, hijinks and hilarity ensue. But the problem is, I lived in the Adirondacks during the summer. As you can see, the Adirondacks is not near any major broadcasting pivot in upstate New York. Welcome to upstate New York, by the way. Um, and, but you could get WKTV with the video feed, but the audio was terrible. You could not hear any of the terrible sexual puns that kids are not supposed to get. My dad had a shortwave radio. Um, I used that shortwave radio. I found out that CBS, the local affiliate, actually pushed their audio out, uh, just the audio feed, and you could just listen to TV on the radio, which is a band. Um, and I could t put the TV on, listen to the shortwave, and you know, get all the Mr. Belvedere I needed. I also lived during the rest of the year during an oldie station. I would get um, in between song chatter on my telephone and everything else in my house. It was amazing to hear these secret signals that nobody else could hear. And then the internet came along and I was uh, able to indulge more of my kind of obsession with these things you're not supposed to hear, uh, broadcast frequencies that you, know, you, you aren't supposed to get, and then I discovered something on the internet that was amazing. It was the Lincolnshire Poacher. And then she'll keep doing that for a while. She'll read numbers for about 10 minutes. Uh, the Lincolnshire Poacher is a numbers station. It's also a traditional English folk song, and it's a type of cheese. Uh, <laughs> the Lincolnshire Poacher is run by MI6, which is the British version of the CIA, basically. Uh, they read out those numbers, and you can hear them pretty much anywhere in the world. This is approximately where the Lincolnshire Poacher station once was. We don't know if it's still broadcasting. That's in Cyprus, Greece, where you hide all your economic money. Um, it's, it's there because it's central, kind of a European location, so the agents of MI6 around the world can receive these numbers broadcast. But you can also get it all over the world to the ionosphere, which bounces, I'm not a radio guy, but it bounces low frequency stuff all around the world. There's a whole thing on Lost where they can hear a transmission from other parts of the world. Um, basically, number stations can be picked up almost anywhere with the right equipment. This is what a number station is basically sending out. Uh, in Cuba, this is what they sent out for one broadcast. Basically, they introduce a group, they sometimes will read the numbers to see what they sound like. They'll read text in four, five, or six uh, number groups, and then they'll repeat it, and then they'll say fien, or attention. People who are uh, spies have these little tiny pads. These are called one-time pads. They're basically a book full of numbers, and you know that group number they announced at the beginning of the transmission lets you know what page to turn to to decrypt the message. Basically, it's, it, it works better than anything else almost for certain things because if you have a whole bunch of broadcasting equipment in your apartment, your neighbors might start wondering like, about your job that you claim is like selling you know, vacuum cleaners or whatever. With a one-time pad and a shortwave radio, you are pretty inconspicuous and you can get information from the home base. It's actually kind of NSA proof um, in a way because even if they find your one-time pad, it tells them nothing. Uh, in, unless you get software on your laptop that decrypts it for you because the Cuban government thinks you can't do it yourself, and then they find your laptop and they decrypt some of the messages about making friends with Air Force people, don't be on a, a plane when we bomb it, and congratulating the female comrades on the International Day of the Woman. Uh, this actually happened. It was uh, the Cuban Five in Miami case. This is another one of my favorite stations. This is called the Buzzer. It is a Russian station. All it does is buzz. Uh, kind of. It, sometimes it sends out in, uh, numbers, which is, freaks people out because the rest of the time it's just doing this. All day, all day, all night, it buzzes. And then occasionally it'll say something. Pe this is a shot from inside the buzzer when it was abandoned. Uh, it's still operating from a different location now. Um, what's funny is that you know people didn't think that it did anything. People thought it was a science experiment, some kind of nuclear thing. The day that Boris Yeltsin, they attempted a coup on him, the hardliners tried to throw him out of office, it just read the number five all day long. Piat, 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 piat. Nobody knows what that means, uh, but uh, someone asked the British government to confirm whether there were number stations, where the MI6 were actually using them. And they gave him this quote, these are what you suppose they are. People shouldn't be mystified by them. They are not for, shall we say, public consumption. And that is as close as we have ever gotten to anyone recognizing that number stations actually exist. Uh, you should Google number stations. You should look at the CONET project, where you can actually listen to hundreds, like dozens at least, of number stations. 
and look up a really great article on the web called Shortwave Espionage for way more about number stations than I could jam into five minutes. So thank you.